What up, 4C gang? Welcome to another episode of my YouTube channel, Cooking with Comedian Michael Allen, where we do cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. What? Don't judge me. Judge your goddamn self. 4C gang for life. Peace. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my 4C gang. Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. Yeah, that's what we do. Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. Cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails. 4C gang for life, baby. How y'all doing this morning? First of all, let's thank God because didn't he bless us to see another day. Come on, y'all. We woke up on the wake-up list. Our name was on there. We still in the land of the living. Some people didn't wake up this morning. All right, y'all. I said, you know what? I got a busy day today, so let me start off. You know, breakfast is the most important part of the, the most important meal of the day because it conditions your body and gets your body started to go out there and do what you got to do. If you got to go to work, if you got to go to school, if you got to do this, you got to do that. This is what gets you motivated. This is what gets you going. Some of us black folk, it just make us sleepy and lay right back on down. I'm going to try not to do that today because it's too much I got to do. So, duh, this is what I cooked. I cooked some some good old, I don't know if you, oh, see, I don't want to spill my grits. I cooked some grits, some sausage, some, like black folk do, some fried bologna, some bacon, some eggs, and some pancakes. Oh, look at this, y'all. Look at that, y'all. Look, y'all, I didn't even bring me a knife in here. Oh, I need to bring a knife. Oh, I got a plastic one. This is what you call a good, good, good breakfast. Ah. Okay. You know, or should I just hold up two pancakes? I love. That's nice. <laughs> Stop it, Michael. Stop it. So you gotta wake up in a good mood, a good. Oh, I gotta get my syrup. No syrup, ain't that a mess? Okay, you guys, I got a little bit of syrup left. Oh, that is not me, that is not me. I gotta go shopping. I'm gonna get that stuff today. Okay, oh, see that's ain't nothing but the devil trying to make me go here to eat without giving him the praise and the glory. First of all, y'all know me, I can't go doing that. I can't eat without giving it up. Dear Lord, Father God, I thank you. I come to you just as humble, just as I am. Father God, I come to you humbly. I thank you. I thank you for the breath of life. I thank you for waking me up this morning, Father God, with no aches and no pains in my right mind or my limbs working, Father God. Only you could do that, Father God, because I could have woke up paralyzed, Father God. I could have woke up blind. I could have woke up deaf. But you saw fit, Father God, for me to still wake up in my right mind. In spite of my faults and my shortcomings, you still love me. You love me even when I don't love myself, Father God. You keep me in your favor. You keep blessing me with mercies, Father God. I thank you for that. Because you don't have to, but you do it because you love me. Which Jesus did way back on Calvary, Father God, for me. When he died for my sins, Father God. He died so that I may live again. Oh, Father God, I thank you for this breakfast. I thank you for me having an appetite this morning, Father God. Because some people can't even eat, Father God. I thank you. I thank you for the little things, Father God. Not the real big things, but I thank you. For the little bitty, itty bitty things, Father God. I thank you because I can move my toes. I thank you because my eyes can look both ways. Father God, I just thank you. And Father God, most important, I thank you for my life. And the most other two things I thank you for, Father God, oh, you've been so good because I still have them, Father God. My beautiful, wonderful, extraordinary superwoman of a mother, mama. Michael Ann Waters, I thank you for her. I thank you for my sweet, kind father, Father God, who's never judged me, who's always supported me in everything that I do, never questioned me, never second doubted me, Father God. Oh, I thank you for my parents, Father God. I thank you that you allowed my mind to get right, to appreciate them more now, Father God, because a lot of people don't appreciate their parents till they're gone, Father God. But I thank you that you, you gave me enough time to get it right. You gave me enough time to understand how blessed I am, Father God. And I thank you that they're still here. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. 
Let me call my mama right now. Oh, see, it's on my spirit just to call my mama. What? I know I'm a mama's boy. What time is it? Oh, it's 10 on 9 here. Let's see. I'm going to let y'all hear. She probably cussed me out, but I love my mama anyway. I love you, mama. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to go over there and lay my head on her breast and just lay down and say, mama, I love you. I ain't going to get none of that back. Why? She probably sleep. Yes. She sleep. You still sleep, mama? Oh, okay, I just called you to tell you I love you. Okay, call me when you get up. I'll probably be able to, to cut your grass today. Oh, is today the holiday? Okay. All right, I love you. Bye-bye. The only time she don't cuss me out is when she's half asleep. So I need to start keep calling her while she's half asleep. You know what I'm saying? Now, see, I know my... Y'all know what? See, this is how close I am to my mama and not my daddy. Because I call my mama. I know her number by her. But my daddy, I have to look it up. But I'm going to call him too, y'all. Y'all, look. So what? I love my parents. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. Okay, here y'all go. Now I'm going to call my daddy. You see how blessed and wonderful I am that I still can call both my parents? And I'm 51 years old. Oh, I appreciate it so much more. But they don't let, neither one of them ever want to talk to me. <clears throat> Watch my daddy. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. Oh, I just called you to say good morning to you. Uh, morning. Did you have breakfast this morning already? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I had some oh, some coffee. Yeah. Okay. What you doing? Cause today the holiday. What you doing for the holiday? Well, no. Yeah. I was just up and eating breakfast and on my way to the grocery store and I said, let me call my daddy and say, I love you. Yeah, I love you, too. Okay, you have a blessed day. All right. All right. Huh? Um, I'm going to Myers on Grand River. Yeah, that Myers. Cause I got, oh, yeah. Yeah, because I got a gift card. So I got to go there. Because I got a gift card, so I'm going to use the gift card I got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, you know, Myers and that Aldi's on, the Aldi's on Woodward. Have you ever been in there in Highland Park? Yeah. You know, they, they price it so much cheaper than everywhere else. I didn't know that. That was my first time going in there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, yeah, cause they don't. Yeah, they don't have a big meat department. I know that. Trust save a lot of meat. I don't even. They got the worst meat ever. Sure, yeah. mm, I bought some hamburger, and I swear I set it in my um, refrigerator. Next day, it was a couple of maggots in there. I, yeah, I had to take it back up there. I said, I know this hamburger ain't spoiled in one damn day. Yeah. Okay, Daddy. Well, look, I gotta finish eating this breakfast. I just called. I love you. All right, I'll talk to you. All right, bye-bye. 
Y'all don't know how that fills my heart to be able to call both of my parents and just say, hey, my daddy shocked me because he's usually a man of few words. My daddy don't say much. He does not. He does not. And you know him and my mama are still married. They ain't together, but they're still married. Been married for 56 years. They got married 56 years ago. And you know what's so funny? Is I sat there the other day and, you know, I was at my mama's house and my daddy came over. And we all sitting there just talking and them two are going at it. My, my mama and daddy, they love my mama. <laughs> you know, her knees been bothering her real bad, so she can't really get around like she normally do. But she was sitting there, and my daddy didn't have on a mask. And my mom was like, where's your mask at? He said, I don't need no damn mask. You know, old country man. And um, <laughs> she said, look now. She said, don't have me get up. She said, uh, she said, I ain't that fucked up. She said, oh, because she said, don't let this cane think I'm fucked up. He said, but you look fucked up. <laughs> He told my mom, but you look fucked up. I say, oh my God, these two are just crazy. But I love sitting there and listening to them. Mm. And listen to them story and, and their camaraderie. And to realize, you know, my mother married my father when she, my, my mama was 15. And my daddy was 20. Yeah. My, married, my mom married him at 15, and my daddy was 20 or 21. I said, Mama, was you pregnant? Why you mad? She said, no. And so they were married four years, and then they had me. My mother was 19, and my daddy was 24. Yeah, my mama was 19. And, and she was turning, she had me in March. She, my mom was 19, she turned 20. That, uh, that September. My daddy was 24 and was turning 25 that October. And the good part about it, well, I mean, well, not the good part. You know, and I was my mother's fourth child. I know a lot of people say, oh, 19, you're her fourth child. She was married. A lot of people didn't get that together. She was married. You know, my mother told me a story how she would be walking down the street with me in the carriage and my sister. And women would look at her, look at that young one, look at that young girl with all them damn babies. We're talking about that no idea that she was married to a hut with a husband. And um, but you know it's so funny now when we somewhere <laughs> and uh we said that we was in the grocery store the other day, and the lady thought me and my mama was husband and wife. My mama said, "You think I would want some little young punk like this?" <laughs> I told the lady, "I said, you think I want some old broad like this?" But we, but now when my sisters and one of us around, a lot of people will look and say, "Oh my God, girl, you look so good." Oh, you no, but see, she was fast and wild back then. You see, that's why I don't care about what people say. Don't give a damn. Because one day they'll be saying one thing and the next day they'll be saying something else. Oh, that sauce is good. And the only person, <clears throat> the only person who opinion matter is your own. What do you think about your damn self? Oh my God. I got some hot sauce. I know them sauces was hot. But yeah, everybody want to be accepted by somebody. Oh, you want to be the popular one in school. I, you know, I thank God for my parents because they didn't give a damn. And I didn't either. I don't either. You know what? My daddy shocked me this morning. My daddy like a one answer guy. You don't get that? No. You want to get that? Yeah. You don't really compensate. And there. You got to pull it out, my dad. My daddy has never, ever whooped me. 
That was me and my mama. I was sitting with my mama and daddy and them. And everybody said, that's why your ass so spoiled. No, my mama did enough damn whooping. My mama did enough ass kicking to last me a lifetime. But my daddy, he never whooped me. It was time my mama whooped me. And I would look over to my daddy like, can you look, can you whoop me sometimes? Because he's doing too damn much. But my daddy always took up for me. Leave that boy alone. That was my leave that boy alone, woman. <laughs> mm hmm My father still hugs and kiss me when I see him. We still hug and kiss. You know, cause I'm not gonna let either one of them leave this earth. I, I'm telling y'all, without a word not being said that I wanted to say. Uh, action not being shown, and I'm sorry for anything that I've ever done. You know, I I have not been a perfect kid. Hell, I ain't been a perfect adult child. You know, I, there's some things that I've did. You know, that I I'll spend the rest of my life not nothing bad, bad, but I'll spend the rest of my life making up and you know. And as their day, that's why I really want to succeed at this thing right here because, and whatever I do, in my endeavors because I want to. Just make sure that my parents are taken care of. That's all I want. Got right to my ultimate goal. Enough of us, a lot of us don't appreciate our parents. When I see some people that talk to their parents a certain way, and when I was young, I had a snippy mouth and I'd go to hell off to. Not really with my daddy, because my daddy went and me and my mama, I know y'all say, oh my God, not as much as I love my mama. We, there were times in my teenage years, we bumped heads a lot. Oh my God. It was more so when my grandmother was living. But see, I didn't, God may think, see, that's how good God is. Because first of all, they say your days on earth will be longer if you love and honor thy parents. Now, by my mother having me at such a young age, us at a young age, my grandmother had more control almost than my mama did. And I almost felt like that was my mama, even though I knew my mama. You know, we lived with my mama. And my grandmother died a month before my 18th birthday. So, but me and my sisters cried like it was our mama. And my mama said, hey, hold the hell up. That was my mama. I'm your mama. I mean, it's like she had to kick reality. I mean, because we were going around. You would have thought we lost our mama. And my mama had to say, no, damn it. See, my mama wasn't no, she didn't sugarcoat nothing. She told you like it was. She told you about real life. So when we got out there, real life didn't surprise us, didn't shock us. And I never understood. If I've never, if I question God about anything, I've always questioned him about my grandmother's death. Why would you take her at 56 years old? My older sister is 56. And I look at, you know, back then I thought that was, oh, grandma was old, she's old, okay, she didn't live her life. But when I look at my sister, my oldest sister that's 56 now, and me being five years from, you think I want to die in five years? No, I want another 50. And I just didn't realize my grandmama, it was, she was so young, but you know, as a child, they look older. 30 was old to me. Hell, 20 was old when you're, you're a child. And I just, question God, why would you take her so young? And my grandma was the sweetest, nicest woman that, oh, every, everybody loved my grandmother. My grandmother had one child, but when when she was in that hospital, it was so many people, that they couldn't believe she only had one child. At her funeral, the funeral possession line was so long, you would not have believed. And they was like, wait a minute, she had one child. Yes, one child. And I just couldn't believe, but you know what? I get it now. I get it now. See, God I've been doing everything to work stuff out in my favor. Little old me. Everybody said, you always think it's about you. <laughs> it should be. But God took my grandmother. Her Whatever her purpose was on life, it was done. Oh, I hate saying that. But whatever her purpose was, it was done. She, her, she had served her purpose coming through this, this thing called life. 
God said, look, I'm going to put you down here for 56 years, let you do what you need to do, have an impact on your grandchildren, your daughter, blah, blah, blah. You know, I remember her being on the phone. My older sister was pregnant because my grandmother died in 87. And my older sister was pregnant with my oldest nephew. And I remember hearing my grandmother on the phone talking to my auntie, my aunt June, rest in peace to her too. And she said, girl, yeah, I'm about to be a great grandmama. She died that February. My sister then had a, my nephew to May. So she knew she was going to be a great grandmama, but she never got a chance to see him. But, you know, I look at it this way because, but I mean, there would be times I would come home and I would just lay in the bathtub, no water, just be in there and just sobbing, sobbing. I mean, uncontrollable cries to where I couldn't breathe. And I thought, okay. I need to go to the hospital. Something is not right. This is not right. God, why? You know, it's okay to question God. You can question him. You can ask him. Why you Why you allow this? Why Why am I going through this, Lord? What is the lesson in this? You may not say it that way in that moment because, yes, I have cussed when I'm... Yes, I've cussed when I... Don't judge me. Judge yourself. People tell me, oh, I have cussed. Yes, Damn it, what's going on? Why? You know, but you have to sit back and you got to find a lesson in it. I look around and be like, why people still got their grandmama? Not that I'm mad at them, but I just wonder why. But then I'm, I'm sure people look at me and say, why he still got his parents? God took my grandmother so that I may appreciate my mother so much more. <laughs> oh. Because I think my grandma, my mother and I would not have been as close as we are. I would not have, I love her, love her, but the love, love I have for my mother now and the appreciation is because I know that's all I got left besides God and my father. My mother is all I got left. Oh, siblings, you cool. <laughs> uh -huh. Siblings, you cool. But how many people know? When parents die, a lot of siblings don't even talk no more. Hell, I don't have to speak. I mean, you know, I see my siblings. Hey. I'm just saying. Oh, how did I get? Oh, so y'all, y'all see how I start over here in the way over there? I start. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it looked it like that that make me happy that I can call my mother and father is, hey, hey, you know, sometimes I just call them make sure they're still breathing, still alive. That's why I've never understood any people and this is my own personal thing. This is nothing against any of my siblings. This is nothing against any other family member or anybody else. This is just my own personal opinion and how I feel. I could never live in another state or a city or state that my mother or father didn't live in. More so I could with my father because he wouldn't care no way. But I couldn't be in another city or state that my away from my mama. I'd have to talk to her. I'd have to know in my mind that I can get to her in 2.2 .2 seconds or at least 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. I've always lived the next street over, next door, across the street, two blocks over, down around the corner, three blocks over. Right now, I can get to my mama in, in five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes top. I can be right at my mama's house with no problem. Michael, I fell. I can't get up. Boom, I'm there. Oh, my God. I can't breathe or whatever. I'm there. Hey, I need this. I'm there. You Ain't, gonna, ain't nobody going to ever call me. You know, I couldn't be that sibling that you have to call and say, well, you know, mama ain't doing too good or daddy ain't doing too good. <laughs> you need to get on down here. Mm -mm. No, I'm already here. Y'all need to come on. Uh. 
I don't understand how people. I know you have to live and pursue your own dreams and stuff. I don't think I have went as far in my career as because I wasn't willing to relocate. They wanted me to move to New York one time, and I was like, no. But I can't do it back and forth. One time they wanted me to go to Atlanta. No, I just, you know, I remember Daddy people were saying, Buki, because you know that's my mama. She said, Buki, you need to move down to Atlanta. Tyler Perry's got a studio here. I said, yeah, but... My, my allegiance is with my mama. I swear, no fame or fortune will ever make me happy. First of all, if my mama not a part of it, if it takes time for me not being able to be there and be there, there, not having somebody else there, not paying somebody to me being there. One thing, my mama would never be in a nursing home. Not even my, my daddy wouldn't be in a nursing home. I wouldn't let you, not as long as they get them checks. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what? Don't judge me. Just, no, it wouldn't even be about, they wouldn't have to have a dime. I would take care of mine. Mm-mm. And they would not be one of them parents. I remember going over a friend of mine house. And I had always visited over, but I had never like really hung out there. Or maybe on the front porch or whatever. And one day we were sitting there drinking and stuff. And I said, where's your bathroom? They said, okay. And I walked up. Have you ever went to a house and there's always a hospital bed in the back and there's an old person back there in the bed? You had never had no idea the old person was there. They didn't even acknowledge. I'm like, how The music and all this stuff. They didn't even care. Uh-uh. My house would be one of them houses. My mama, it's a hospital bed in the front room. You ain't got no choice but to say hi to my mama and daddy or whoever. They gonna have a hospital in the front room, one in the back, or wherever the hell they want. They have a couple of hospital beds. Acknowledge my mama or my daddy. And the funny part about it is, I look like both of them. I look like my daddy, and I look exactly like my mother. How is that possible? I look exactly like my father. I had no idea that this video would turn out to be about my mom and my daddy. And they both answered, didn't they? <laughs> but my dad said, what market are you going to? You see... My mother has a deep voice and my daddy. So my voice was inevitably, inevitable to be deep. And the funny part is, I used to be able to, I, my voice used to be so high, I sound like a little girl. I used to get my sister in trouble when somebody would answer the phone, they get smart. I mean, I answer the phone, somebody gets smart. I was like, go to hell, because you know, I always could cuss. Ooh. God gave me the gift of cussing. And I know someone else said, God didn't give you that gift. <laughs> I got the gift to cuss. So, I would cuss them out. I'd be like, Sonya. <laughs> and I'd hang up the phone. They'd tell my mom, your daughter cussed me out with her little disrespect was out. Mom be like, wait a minute, Sonya? My sister, that was it. She was a timid, nice, quiet one. She be crying, no, I ain't cussing And I would be laughing and sniggering in the corner. <laughs> be like, no, I cussed they ass out. But then, I swear to God, I was about 11. Can y'all believe this? At 11, I woke up with one. I mean, it didn't. My voice didn't gradually get deep. It just went from this, from A to Z, like that. I woke up one day. I hadn't said a word. I got up and I took a shower and I, I didn't say nothing that particular day. Brushed my teeth and did all that and then my mama called me. Michael. I said, huh? When I said, huh, I stared my damn self, y'all. I jumped. I said, oh, shit. Huh, huh. <clears throat> I was trying to call. <laughs> I thought I had something stuck in my throat. My mama said, what? Michael. I said, huh? She said, come here. Oh, oh. I say, huh? 
Yeah, what, what the hell are you doing to your boy? Stop it. I said, what? And she had to tell she said, she, oh, they just kept making me talk. It was like, a, <laughs> I can't believe my boy just went from way up high, from soprano to second bass, to baritone. Mm. But I love my boys. I ain't complaining. Thank you, Jesus. I don't sound like somebody's little sister no more. I love this Debo boy. People always say, you should be on the radio. Who well, used to do commercials, voiceovers? Yeah. Okay, y'all. My fourth game for life. I'm going to let y'all into a part of my life again. Oh. Um, I'll do a whole video on that one. But, there's so many things I've been wanting to talk to you guys about. Let y'all into my life. Let me into yours. Let's become family. 4C gang. Cooking, coming, cussing, and cocktails. Cooking, coming, cussing, and cocktails. Oh, that's so. I picked up the wrong sausage. Them sausages are spicy. <laughs> 4C gang. Look, I got me just losing you know. them. 4C gang for life, baby. Look. One video I did, oh, I got so many comments and so many haters, but I got more, I got more loves than I do haters. One person was like, um, I thought you were going to talk about Sweetie Pie. Hell, you talk, it's all about you. Everything ain't about you. I said, well, yes, it is. <laughs> what they said, somebody said, ooh, your food look good. And somebody commented on her comment and said, yeah. It look even better if he had a, uh, it would have looked even better if he had a chew with his mouth closed. I said, you're right. And I said, it would have looked even more better if you had a look with your eyes closed. <laughs> Y'all know I'm petty. King clap back. Let's do it. Shit. One lady said, uh, oh, she used ratch ratchet, ratchetable. I said, ma'am, that's not even a word. I said, but, oh, it's probably a word in the hood. Ebonics, ghetto. You gonna clap at me? Clap at me with some damn word. Not, don't give me no Ebonics when you clapping at me. Or, and it's funny because I'm used to that. And um, for the people to take the time out their day. See, we so, you know, when people up, it takes a minute. Do it take more? Let me ask this question. Do it take more out of us to uplift somebody? Or is it a lot easier to belittle somebody? You know, even when I do my comedy act, the only people, I, only time I really put somebody down is if they heckle me. I don't. I have too much to talk about in my own life to try to just all I, any comedian that comes out and just talks about the audience. And that's somebody that don't have anything to talk about, and all you're doing is just trying to cap or blade. Uh uh. I'm telling a story. And, 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 and nine times out of ten, that story's about my own life. I ain't, see, I stay in my own lane. I ain't got to worry about your shit and what you doing. If I'm too busy over here in this lane worrying. Now, if it's something that's just too damn obvious, yeah, I'll talk about it. I, I ain't, look, I still got an egg, some pancake, a piece of bologna. Look, a little grab. Okay, y'all. Because, see, look, if I eat them, I'm going to lay them right back down. You know what they call that? Igga itis, nigga I don't know. Okay. Thank you, guys, for tuning in to another show. But, look, if this is your first time or you just so happen to stumble across me and what is this guy talking about? Oh, he kind of intro. Oh, he kind of funny. Oh, he's controversial. Oh no, he didn't. Oh, but he looked good. Oh, look at that smile. Damn, he fine. Oh, I bet he hung. No, let me. <laughs> what? Don't judge me. Judge your damn self. So look, if this is your first time and you haven't subscribed, you're not a subscriber. You're not part of the Four C game, and you want to be a part of the Four C game, cooking, comedy, cussing, and cocktails, because that's what the hell we do on this channel. Do your boy a favor. Go ahead and subscribe. <clears throat> then after you subscribe, once you do this, like the video. 
If you like, dislike it, either one, look, put your input in. Go ahead, say a comment. Comedian Michael Allen, that was too far, the shit you just said, that was foul. Or, oh, but once you do that, you know I'm going to clap back because I'm petty as hell. I'm king of petty. I got time. I got time today. <coughs> That's going to be my favorite line. I got time today. I got time every motherfucking day. But look, go ahead. Put a comment in there. What you like, what you didn't like. You know, that's what we do. We can agree to disagree. Don't ever think, anybody, don't ever think that if you say something to me or you got suggestions or you say, Michael, I didn't like to, I, I, hey, that's your opinion. It ain't going to change mine, but that's your opinion. I ain't going to be mad at you for feeling what you feel because I'm always, all I can do is be me. I got to be me. Okay, you do that. Then go ahead and share this video. Share it with everybody. Share it with your family. Share it. I don't think you can share it with your pastor, though, because I cuss too damn much up in. Pastor be to set you down in church and put you out of church. You pass it. You, you look at that shit like that. That's what your pastor said. You, your pastor be to cuss. What the hell is this? <laughs> okay. Then after that, you see that bell down there? This is what I want you to do. I want you to ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. Ring, ring, ring. Uh, you can ring my bell. You can ring my bell. You can ring my bell any time, any day. Ring it, ring it, ring it. Why don't y'all ring my bell? And if you don't, go to hell. <laughs> All right, y'all. Like I said, thank you. Thank y'all for the support. We at 4.4K. A little over 4,000 subscribers now. Come on, y'all. Won't he do it? Come on, somebody. Look, it's your boy, comedian Michael Allen. I love y'all. I love the fuck out of y'all. But I just don't love you more than I love myself. All right, this is comedian Michael Allen. I'm out. Peace. Have a blessed day.